What happened to the Flag Smashers? When is the government making Captain America? What do we call you? Is it still Falcon? Is it Captain Falcon? Sam, thank you so much from all of us. Sincerely, you did your part in dealing with those terrorists, and I will do ours. Are you still going forward with resetting the borders? Our peacekeeping troops will begin relocating people soon. The terrorists only set us back a bit. You have to stop calling them terrorists. Hey, I'm Derek. And I'm Noah. And you're listening to A Bite Of where we take our current favorite pop culture obsession and enjoy it one nibble at a time. And we've made it to the very, 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 very end of Falcon and Winter Soldier. Super excited to talk about this episode before we get into it. As always, make sure you're following us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. There's a Facebook group. So yeah, just make sure you're following us on there. And that's where you can keep up with us on the daily. Yeah, if you feel like listening to one episode of us a week isn't enough Derek and Noah for you there are so many other ways to enjoy us and those are some of them <laughs> there's not as much singing though so if that's what you're I mean there's social media mediums unless you want you know Instagram stories of me making up songs which could happen but I'm just saying there aren't right now <laughs> before we get into the talking about and breaking down and recapping the final episode of Falcon and Winter Soldier. Let's take a step back and talk about what led up to this point. Yes. So in episode five, which was last week, it was called Truth. And we see that Sam and Bucky finally get the shield back from the one and only Walker. And the rest of this episode is really about Bucky and Sam trying to figure out where they're going from here. Zemo gets taken by the Dora Milaje, so he's out of the picture. It's this big decision of, will Sam take up the mantle of Captain America? Right, and that's a big decision he had to make. But by the end of it, it does seem like he's like, I'm going to do it because I learned everything I need to, and what is the point of everything that everybody went through for this damn shield if I'm not going to keep fighting for it? So that leads us to the very finale. Of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. That's right. So let us officially take a bite of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Episode 6, One World, One People. (laughs) Is that that Carly? I'm trying. (laughs) I'm not as badass as her, but it's very one world, one people. But you guys do have the same color hair, so that's That's right. She has glorious hair on her head. I have a somewhat okay ginger beard. (laughs) (laughs) So the finale starts right where the last episode left off, and it's... The GRC lockdown. And that's where we pick up right in this episode. So like this finale really lends itself to big action pieces, Mm. which I was happy about. I mean, it is an action show. It's not like WandaVision where there was a bunch of drama and mystery. This one at the roots of it was like Captain America Winter Soldier. I was about to say Falcon and the Winter Soldier. (laughs) Captain America Falcon Winter Soldier. (laughs) Sam Wilson Bucky. But it is a action piece. So Love it. Love it. So more than half of this episode is dedicated to multi-stage, multi-location, battle between heroes, and the anti-nationalist Flag Smashers. Bucky is already at the GRC, and Sam's on his way, and Sharon's already there. But it doesn't look like Sharon at first, because it's she has this the, the thing on her face that Natasha had in Captain America Winter Soldier. <laughs> Electric spider web? No. So actually, I found out the name of it. <laughs> what? And it's called a photostatic veil, which sounds amazing. And makes perfect sense. Mm-hmm. How about that? And it turns out that Carly was waiting for Sam to get there to really kick off the plan. As soon as she sees Sam fly in, she's like, okay, let's get this plan into action, mm. which is a little weird. So part of Carly's big plan here is to gas the building and take some hostages. Because how does she send a message? But through violence, how she's been doing it this entire time. Sam flies through the window. Who needs doors? <laughs> and says, I'm Captain America. And we see the glorious, glorious new suit of Captain America slash with Falcon homages. <laughs> yeah, I feel like Sam is saying flag smashers how about window smashers because he is smashing windows like nobody's business in this whole episode (laughs) he's like i have this shield now i'm going to effing use it yeah he does use it i mean we saw in the last one there was a great training montage you need one in anything action and he proved that he can use this shield now but the suit just for a minute, I just we just need to talk about of the course. suit because it's been leading to this moment. Six weeks been leading to this moment. 
I am a huge fan of it. It is directly from the comics. Mm -hmm. Marvel Phase 4 was like, oh, you guys want comic book accurate costumes? Okay, here you go. We got Scarlet Witch and the amazing final costume that she showed us in her final episode. Sam's doing the same thing. Love it. Colors, glorious. I have one complaint. <laughs> oh, great. Okay, fine. And it's, Just no, no, no. kill my butts. No, no, no. <laughs> and, it's, and, it's, and it's for the safety of... Of our beloved Sam Wilson. Uh huh. Okay, this man, from toe up to almost the flow up, is protected except for the top of his head. Yeah, I mean, what well, is he's flying into things, through things. That's why he has a shield. No cranial protection at all. <laughs> he's been fine for five movies without covering his head. I'm sure he'll be fine. They, he's <laughs> like, they're like, they're like, we're gonna put little little holes for his ears, and also the top of his head is there. <laughs> oh my god, give him something. You know, I'm a fan of it. I, I'm a fan of just changing up the normal cowl slash helmet, mm -hmm. and I like that it does show the top of his head. I'm here for just it. Just makes me nervous. Yeah, yeah I but I it. think. As a total, that's just me being bratty and silly. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous outfit. Yeah. I mean, it was a great reveal. We all knew it was coming from what was in the box that Bucky dropped off from Wakanda. Mm -hmm. I love that. I guess we can guess that they're vibranium wings because it came from Wakanda. Mm -hmm. That would be weird if they're like, no, it's just 10. So be careful. <laughs> vibranium is really scarce right now. It's aluminium. <laughs> yeah. So I love it. I'm super happy that they went that direction and- this actually was the thing that was spoiled for me in the first episode oh, no. because somebody, these toy companies, I swear to God, spoil so much. And somebody got a picture of that. And I was like, no, they're not going to do the exact costume from the comics. It was this exact they costume. They done when they did yeah. it. I also like when he comes to the window and he lands in his new uniform, they give us like the Falcon and the Winter Soldier horns. Like, yeah. it's like, reveal. <laughs> was that the horn? Was yeah. That? If you listen, they go like that. <laughs> it's always like that's like their theme music i guess i don't know they do that at any like sort of big moment in the show that's why it's called the theme it's a theme for the the show <gasps> <laughs> all right so <laughs> awful uh, you weren't in band when you were growing up were you no <laughs> i went to a private school all we had was jesus talk we didn't have shop or band or anything like that i'm sorry Home economics. I just wanted to bake a cake. <laughs> so this episode, it does go in between what Bucky's doing, what Sharon's doing, what Carly's doing, what Sam is doing. So we're going to try our best to follow the line and talk about it in general. So Sam is now fighting Batrock, and we do see that he has some new... He has. It seems like he's comfortable with the shield. Mm -hmm. and he's using it really well. I mean, Batrock did throw a, sh a chair at the shield, yeah. which kind of deflected the shield so i was like great well <laughs> i love always the giant thud of the shield hitting the floor when it was just like boom yeah they're like it's heavy yeah which it, but it, i don't think it's supposed to be heavy I don't know. right <laughs> they're like vibranium while lightweight is quite hefty two tons yeah exactly <laughs> so at this point sharon tells bucky that they need to keep people from getting out of the building and carly calls bucky to Pretty much tell him he's fighting for the wrong side. But he's, I think he knows what side he's on. And I don't think he's going to just flip from the you calling him up on his cell phone and getting passed from a random lady. And he tries to warn her that what you're doing, I, I know where you're coming from. Mm. I've been having nightmares from decades of killing people and doing what you're doing. It's not going to end well. She still is trying to get people on her side at this point. Seems a little desperate to me, but when in doubt. Try to get the Winter Soldier on your side. <laughs> when when did she formulate this plan that random lady in pencil skirt will be waiting there and if she sees Bucky to hand him the phone? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it. it's clear that the Flag Smashers have a big reach yeah. and they got a big following. But to have that person that's already working at the GRC, I mean, who knows? I mean, she obviously planned very well to have that lady at the yeah. exact moment or the lady was like, hey, I see Bucky. And she's like, okay, pass him the phone. <laughs> yeah. She wrote ICWS. She's like, oh, I see Winter Soldier. Uh, and I, I mean, in reality, though, like there is this back and forth. She's trying to like seem to dig into him mentally and play some mind games. But really, it's just a way to keep him from keeping the people to get out of the building. Right. 
Exactly. Yeah. And then that's like, Sharon's like, you had one job, bruh. Yeah. I mean, he got distracted. I mean, number one rule of cell phones, though. I mean, I don't know what he knows about cell phones. We're still on the fence about that. He knows about dating apps, but he doesn't seem to realize that you could walk with them. <laughs> he kind of did pace a little bit, but. <laughs> but like know. he could have taken it and re- kept going on his mission. <laughs> More important things. <laughs> <laughs> so at this point in the episode, there are a bunch of quick action beats in this extended sequence that takes up pretty much half of the finale mm. The I do want to say that the cinematography and the way that they did this whole big action set piece and the music too, it was just, it was different from most of the show and it was so good. I thought they did some really clever things with the shots, especially that shot that came overhead that down the staircase Yeah, that it was, was all cool. red and people going down. It. I'm like, I love a good aerial shot. Give me more of those. I do like these GRC members though, like sort of like lackadaisically just like going down these <laughs> stairs and then they're like oh good police vans are here i'll go in them right. but they're not like regular police vans they're like armored to, to, to transport prisoners and stuff yeah <laughs> i guess it is protective though okay. so i mean can't can't really and also some like four people go to the roof <laughs> yeah I, I mean more important people to the roof right yeah so the flag smashers end up getting hostages out of the building and Bucky goes after them via motorcycle. Heck yeah. Sharon uses a mercury vapor bomb on a flag smasher. Yikes. Bubbly Melts skin. Real good. Yeah. yeah. I'm not, not a fan of bubbly, bubbly grilled cheese. No. Oh, God. Come on. Don't ruin grilled cheeses mm, for gooey. me. Gooey. Three cheese. Sam is continuing this fight with Bad Rock. And I really was hoping for a clear win for Sam because there's this running thing. And if you think back on it, and I've talked about in the last episode, Sam really hasn't won any one to one fights mm. ever, mm. which is fine. Like I'm not, I'm not here to be like he's not a great fighter. The point is, he always gets back up and he continues to fight. Great, but he had to leave because the helicopter on the roof was taking people. So he's the only one with wings. He's the only one that can save them. So he had to skip out on that fight with Bad Rock, which leads us to believe that Bad Rock is just going to keep showing back up. <laughs> so he needs to take him out. <laughs> Bad Rock returns. But of course, to get out of the building, he takes a shield, <laughs> chucks it through a window, breaking it, and then dives after it. Yeah, doesn't even go through... Does he go through the same window? Or no, a he one? breaks a whole new oh, window. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we finally get a great air action scene with this new cap. And we haven't really gotten mm. one of these since the very opening of the series. Because he's been grounded like this entire time, which part of me was a little missing that a little bit because you have the Falcon in it. Yeah. Give me more Falcon things. But this whole thing was dismantling Falcon to build up Captain America. I get it. Still doesn't mean I didn't want it. (laughs) We like flying. Okay. (laughs) That's it. Bottom line. So in this chase scene slash trying to get the hostages from the helicopter scene, Red Wing helps... Sam, so <laughs> Red Wing is back. He's back. <laughs> he's back. Y'all, and he's better than ever. He's chirpier. <laughs> he's going on the mission. He's scanning faces. <laughs> he's flying places. He's Red Wing, baby. And it, hopefully he's vibranium, so somebody can't just snap him in half. Don't <laughs> do that. <laughs> so you're right. He does scan faces in the helicopter to see if, by chance, do any of the hostages know how to fly a helicopter. Of course, one of them does know how to fly a helicopter. Mm-hmm. The end of this big chase scene in the sky ends with Sam kind of echoing what he did in the first episode. Remember when he flew through the helicopter to get the pilot out of it or oh, to yeah. get the, the military liaison that was taken yeah. hostage? He does the same thing with the Flag Smasher that's piloting it. And the funniest thing about this, so we had a watch party. And when this was happening, he uses, he somehow texts the hostage yeah. inside of the helicopter it's like, one, how did you do that? <laughs> and he also knew that she had earbuds. <laughs> He's like, put your earbud in. And she's like, I left my AirPods at my desk. <laughs> he must like have some really cool like eye to text thing. Like, you know, he like looks and can like type with his eyes. I mean, I think at, the text. at this point, it's just safe to say that he is like Iron Man mixed with Captain America. Also with the Falcon. Also the Falcon, too, because he has the wings. He's a trifecta. Yeah. So, I mean, he, he has all this technology and he can use it. It was just funny because it's like, don't fly and text at the same time. You know? <laughs> Safety first, folks. <laughs> so he does end up saving that helicopter. Another helicopter is actually crashing at the same time with good guys, question mark, in it. He saves them and we get to see these vibranium wings in action because he gets one of the pilots that's falling from it 
makes a dome with the shield and the wings, and the helicopter just bounces off of it. Like a pebble. Yeah. Like it's the baby pebble. And as we know, vibranium absorbs kinetic energy. So it's like, okay, cool. I like that we're seeing some stuff that this wings wings can do outside Mm -hmm. of just looking badass. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So in between this fight, we get a scene of Carly meeting up with her main four flag smashers that we've seen throughout the series. And she pretty much says that, you know, we'll just kill these hostages if we have to. Yeah. And and like, they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. We never said that. We said we would use them as leverage. And she's like, well, they don't mean anything to us. So, oh, well, we'll kill them. And she goes bye like, bye. one world. And like, they're supposed to be like one people like right away, like immediately. And then they're kind of just like, um, mm, you're crazy now. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, one world. And one of them is like, one people. <laughs> They're like, yeah, cool. Let's go, I think. Yeah, I think there's some wavering. Like, I think they see like, okay, maybe some of this is just not going according to plan at right. this point. And you're going extremist on us and I it's mean, scaring us. She's been an extremist, but it's like, okay, now you're just killing people. Yeah. Like, you're saying they don't matter and you're just killing them. So why kill them if they don't matter? <laughs> yeah, it's also like we're not really going to get our point across if we're just murdering people constantly. I mean, they'll be on the news. That's for sure. <laughs> so Carly ends up meeting up with the vans that are carrying the hostages. Bucky launches himself at a flag smasher from his motorcycle. Carly lights one of the vans on fire for distraction because Bucky's there. And I don't think they can really go toe to toe with him. And then bargain bin cap. I mean, John Walker shows up. Yes, with maybe one of my favorite line deliveries, Morgan Thou! Yeah. And you just see that little tiny baby rivet shield that he's holding. <laughs> I, yeah. I mean, in, in this little short exchange that they have, there's something that's not... I, Carly tells him that Lamar's life didn't matter. Like, I didn't mean to kill him, but his life didn't matter for the cause. Why would you say this to to this guy? Right. I mean, that's like the one thing, like... I mean, you're pretty much activating the Hulk at this point. Mm. And that's not that's not cool. And it's furthering the narrative of I think she's just too far in, over her head. Yeah. And she's not doing things the proper way. Well, I mean, even if we look at it, the whole thing with the super soldier serum, right, is that it's supposed to like ampl- amplify whatever's happening in you or who you are. Right. So Walker immediately went crazy. Carly was level-headed for a while and had a true belief in what she was doing, but then she went off the rails, so that just keeps getting amplified. Yeah. So whatever's coursing through them is not doing them any good. No. And I, then- also, I also wonder, what did Walker's wife think when he left the house after spending hours putting that shield together? Hun, where are you going, babe? <laughs> He's like, all right. All right I'm just going right. to Comic-Con. Yeah, exactly. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> She's just like on the phone with Mark. She's like, I don't know. He's going somewhere. I'm just gonna, go. <laughs> he made a new shield. I don't know. Yeah, he looks it. fine. He's fine. <laughs> so his trash can lid shield is no vibranium and it gets deflected pretty easily. He throws it at Carly and she just kicks it to the side. And you can hear, good thing you brought up how it sounds when the shield hits the ground because this one just sounded like tin or yeah. just not thick metal hitting the ground. An old can of peas. Yeah. <laughs> I was a little scared when they started duking it out because Carly... She's strong. I mean, she has a super soldier serum, but it seems like John is a little beefed up at this point and he's mm. really out for blood. She gets to the vans and then she decides to just drive the van off of the edge of a construction site. You know, it's like this construction site and it's like the basement of the building. So it's like just a like a cliff right. into more construction. <laughs> I don't know much about construction, so I'm going with that. Yeah. <laughs> All I know is that I don't like walking under scaffolding. Yeah, it is a little, especially in New York. It's oh, like, no. Especially when they're working on it, too, and sparks are falling oh, down. Oh, God, please. I've seen uh, whole glass panels fall from the sky and smash in the middle of Fifth Avenue. Oh. Scary. Yeah. Sorry, Brian Park. <laughs> Luckily, no one got hurt. I think someone's leg got cut, but it was crazy. Jeez Louise. You know, watch out. Careful, careful. (laughs) Made me more scared now. Mm -hmm. So these people are in the van and it's about to tip over and Bucky is down at the bottom of the site because he got thrown down there and he's dealing with this flag smasher that has this giant steel beam beating him. And John has the, I guess, choice to either go after Carly and do what he came there to do or save the people. And to my surprise, he saved the people. Or at least he he held the van and he tried to hold it from falling down. 
So that's good. There's still a little bit of good left in John. I mean, I think he's always baseline been trying to be good, but mm. just so many things clouded his motivations and how he sees people and where he's going to go and how he's going to act. Yeah, it was definitely a quick turnaround, though, from, you know, crazy guy trying to bash people's heads into, you know, oh, a van. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to save it. Yeah. He unfortunately isn't the one able to save the van because Carly and the Flag Smashers overrun him. Van starts falling. Luckily, Sam makes it there to save the day. And we get this great moment of him pushing the van back over with the help of Red Wing and Red Wing Jr. Double Red Wing, baby. (laughs) They were like, look, we know Derek was really sad about Red Wing dying so early on in the series. So you know what? How about two? And Derek (laughs) said, thank you very much. How delightful. This is a cool moment, too, aside from the great imagery of him saving the people in that van. But we also see some onlookers. Mm. And one of them says, like, Black Falcon. And the guy was like, no, that's Captain America. And that's super cool to see that, like... I think it's we didn't really see people aside from outside of that uh, high school with John Walker really liking him as Captain America. But this one, people were immediately just like, that's Captain America. Loved it. Loved to see it. And this is like the first time that someone's actually referring to him as Captain America, Mm -hmm. which is pretty badass as well. Yeah. And -hmm. of course, people got their cell phones out. (laughs) A little different from when the last time they had the cell phones out uh, capturing what Mr. Walker was doing. Yikes. Not great. Mm -mm, mm -mm. There's about to be a true showdown. When Batrock appears and releases a bunch of smoke bombs and Carly escapes. So Sam ends up leading his new trio, Bucky and Walker, to track down Carly. But Sharon Carter has already found Carly. Also fully revealing through some a little bit of clunky dialogue that she is the power broker. It was Sharon Carter all along. Sing. Now, where is her iTunes single? Agreed. Like, I feel like... I loved Agatha all along. Great single. I still listen to it every now and then, <laughs> meaning it just comes onto my rotation. But I could see her, if she did have a single, Haley Williams for Paramore doing her single. I just, for some yes. reason, I could just feel her doing that. <laughs> Fully support. I love it. I also like that, like, they went from, like, this, like, lower level construction site to, like, the catacombs of New York. It was, like, it was a continuation of the construction site. It was the... Basement of the basement. (laughs) The underground basement. basement. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, they are in lower Manhattan, and most of the rest of this kind of takes place underground and Mm. in close quarters, unlike where we just were. So it was interesting to see them change the scenery a bit, but it made it more intimate for these reveals. Yeah, so Sharon Carter is Power Broker. It was staring us in the face this entire time. I know we went back and forth between who could it be? Why are they not revealing it? If they're waiting to reveal it, it just has to be Sharon because that's weird. (laughs) Yeah, I think the thing is, is that we were kind of like, first of all, I think that we were like, oh, it's Sharon, which felt almost too obvious. Mm -hmm. So I think we were all like, well, maybe it's someone else because they're not telling us, but we all know already. Yeah, I mean, the only... (sighs) Like we went from ever, guessing it was like Zola to maybe Isaiah Bradley because he had something against the super soldier serum too. So it was like, what? Who could have motivations? I mean, it's Sharon. I mean, she obviously has been around since the blip. Like she didn't get blipped. No. So she grew to power, became the power broker, and is just doing what she wants to do now at this point. There's some interesting conversation between Carly and Sharon, and she talks about how. Like, Sharon saw herself in Carly, but I think this was just more empty words. Like, she's Mm. still trying to get Carly back on her side. Yeah. And Carly replies, it's like, you just want your muscle back. That's all you want, which I kind of feel like is true. There's no more super soldier serum, so they're the only ones that have it. No, no, no. I mean, (laughs) what we're seeing absolutely now is that everything that Sharon has done this entire time has been to benefit herself. Right. So even in talking to Carly, it has nothing to do with Carly at all. It just wants, she wants her soldiers. Mm -hmm. And Carly's like, look, nah. More important things. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, I just tried to throw some people off a building. (laughs) I'm on the run here. Can we just- Thank you. Are we done talking? I gotta go. Send me an email. Yeah. (laughs) It's- Carly Morgenthau at At (laughs) FlagSmashers.net. So, Batrock ends up arriving. Of course, I feel like everything, every time in the series, it's like something's happening. We're finally getting answers. And then somebody else comes into the scene. 
So, of course, it's Batrock, and he realizes that Sharon is a power broker as well, tries to blackmail her for more money. Sharon shoots Batrock. Carly shoots Sharon. Shoot, yep. shoot Sharon. That was a hard, hard one to say. It was a standoff. Uh, obviously, things didn't go well, but Carly didn't get shot. Sam does arrive to help, having conveniently missed out on hearing Sharon's villainous dialogue, plans, whatever. Look, if I was Carly, that'd be the first thing I would say. She's a power broker. She's a power broker. She's a power broker. <laughs> Text him. She's a power broker. Put it in the app. Uh, something. Send out the alert. Yeah, I'm not I'm not too sure. I mean, I guess she just didn't care about revealing it. Like, that's not part of her agenda. So, I mean, whatever. Convenient. Yeah, convenient. So, Sam and Carly fight. Well, more like Carly fights Sam and Sam defends because he won't fight her. Sam and Carly do have a bit of exchange where he asks her, where's the murder for political reasons going to end? Mm. Because it's a slippery slope, etc. Like, he's still trying to reach her at this point. They don't have a long conversation, though, because Sharon soon shoots Carly to death and Sam doesn't think it's suspicious or malicious that Sharon just shot her. <laughs> it's like this whole thing. I, I, it's, it's a really sad and blunt end mm. to such an interesting character. And it, the image of Sam holding her while she's dying, it's just, it is really upsetting because at the base of it, she's a kid. Totally. She's a teenager. She did some fucked up things. She was misguided. And Sam tried to guide her. <laughs> and then she says, her dying words are, I'm sorry. Yeah. What do you think that means? I think it's, they, so, I mean, we've talked about it and we've kind of seen it where Sam and Carly had the same, they want the same thing. They want everybody to be helped. They want everybody to have accountability, nobody to be left behind. They want the same thing. And I think at some level, there's some respect there. Mm. And that's why Sam continuously, and even to the very end, did not fight her. Right. He was trying to reach out to her again and again and trying to guide her. And he knows that she's doing the wrong things. And yeah, maybe she wouldn't be offered a cabinet position, but at least she wouldn't die. And maybe something good can come from it. But- Unfortunately, that's not where we were left. I think you make a good point, though, as far as it being a blunt end. It was weird. I felt like it was a very fast death. Like, this character was the main driving force behind a lot of this series. And then Sharon shoots her twice, and that's it. Sharon got shot in the stomach. She's rolling around. Can <laughs> get up and shoot somebody else. It's like, huh? Yeah, I mean... Yeah, I, I think it is sad. I, I feel like death is always the end for extremists in the MCU. But the people who really usually pull the strings really face justice. Mm. So it's one of the... I don't know. I, I, I feel like maybe the story going forward with Carly, if she was to survive, where would that lead her? Like, what could they possibly do with her aside from maybe put her in the raft and she shows up again out of nowhere? Mm -hmm. Like Batrock keeps doing, mm -hmm. but... I just think like her motivations and who she is as a character, I don't think that there was story left for her. But I do feel like it was just cut. It was – she died real quick. Yeah. Like I didn't expect like halfway through the episode for her to die. Yeah. You know? I'll tell you what I miss out on. Uh, the character of Flag Smasher and his black and white outfit with his little earth belt – that he wore i was kind of hoping that maybe in the future she i don't know at least like a black and white skull kind of thing <laughs> yeah. right go with the, the colors the motif but they were like no all right yeah i mean as we've seen in the mcu they tend to make you really like the character not for what they're doing but you like the character they're interesting and everything and then they tend to kill them off Die. or you never see them <laughs> yeah. again and i mean the actress that played carly magenthal i just she so good so now this brings us pretty much to the midway, a little more the midway point of the episode. And this scene, I feel like, is it's divisive for fans and critics. And it shows that Sam drops a few speeches on senators. He takes Carly's body and brings it to the surface. Yeah, where, <laughs> where everybody's <laughs> gathering and the senators happen to all be there. And so are all the news media. And he gives these speeches in front of the council members, the GRC and the senators while the whole world is watching because everybody has their phones out. Camera people are there. He does. He notes how labels like terrorists, refugees, and thugs only lead to problems of blame and responsibility. This isn't easy decisions, Senator. It's not. I mean, I think as a whole, and this is what the series has been showing us that 
the the question is why why are these people doing this why are you doing this are the intentions correct we do see that Isaiah Bradley is even watching this because it's on the news and he not, it seems like he's like nodding in approval or he's realizing something. We see Sarah also watching it. We get a little short cameo of Torres. He's watching it as well. He seems very proud of his friend now, Captain America. Sam then continues to say that how he has no serum and no blonde hair, that his only power is belief that people can do better. I feel like Sam's off the cuff manifesto is very much in the spirit of Captain America mm-hmm. who from in the comic pages to the big screen has nearly always been both the champion of the underdog and a force of fairness. So they, they're the people who can tell the world. The only power I have is that I believe that we can do better. It makes sense. Yeah. Like, I feel like this is something that's Sam at the core. This is who he is. He knows how to talk to people. I feel like outside of stopping giant aliens from wiping out half the population or even just smaller threats like Carly, this is something where he's comfortable in doing. He's a counselor, even though he was a pararescue man in the military. This is what he does. This is his wheelhouse. He has a level-headed approach to everything. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this, you know, speech or whatever it was, was really sort of letting us all know the basis of all of the actions that were happening throughout this whole series. Right. Right. Flag smashers and Sam and now these senators. And they do talk a lot about kind of the process of why the patch act exists and what they're trying to correct. And Sam is kind of going back and forth with them, but I think it brings up a lot of points. I mean, we had even asked questions. I think I had even said like, what if you moved into a house and then the people that Mm -hmm. used to live there come and and they literally say that. So they're dealing with all these different things, but it seems that Sam is able to kind of boil it down and say, yes, I understand that, but this is why it's not the right way to approach the situation. Right. And also you can just pick up a phone and move some money around. Right. Like, Calm down. Yeah, I did like one thing that he said. It was something along of the lines of who is in those rooms when you're making those decisions? Is it the people you are going to impact or just more people like you? Right. And I think that's a clear that's a clear parallel to what's happening in our real world. Oh, yeah. Because it's not that way. I mean, we as Americans get to vote for leaders or people that are going to represent. But that doesn't always mean we have a voice in what they vote on or what ends up getting passed. Right. Absolutely. So I think that him by saying this also literally putting it out there for the world to see is really holding them accountable. I feel like, so he speaks about representation and encourages people in power to ask the right questions. Like why did Carly die trying to stop them? And I think like outside of him using terrorists and the word terrorist and, you know, they're, they're just doing violence. They want to kill us. And it's like, why? Why do they want to do that, though? Mm. If you think you're doing the right thing, you just got to step back and be like, is this the right thing? Like, why is this group trying to kill me? And as we've seen, though, it's not only just this one small group of people. There are citizens all over the world that feel this way. Look at Sarah. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Clear point. I mean, aside from the obvious things that if the blip and everything didn't happen, there is some separation and there's definitely racism in this. But there's also that added layer of the blip in this where... People were being taken care of more over than other people. So I feel like at the end of everything we've seen, is this is what Sam has wanted for most of the series. He would always try to understand before coming to blows. He would always counsel before having violence if he could. Mm-hmm. And I feel like this is him. And Captain America needs to make the speeches. Like he, That's one of the things is Steve did that a lot too. And, Not that he has to do exactly what Steve did, but I don't think it's out of the norm for Sam to want to do this. Agreed. You know? Yeah. So Walker gives Sam the nod of approval, but he calls Sam Cap, which was super nice. I loved loved hearing that. Uh, Before Sharon leaves, Sam tells her he has not forgot about the promise to pardon her. Mm -hmm. Well, she seemed a little antsy to get out of there. (laughs) Yeah. She's like, I got shot in the abdomen, but I'm fine. (laughs) I gotta go. (laughs) So the later half of this episode is really just tying up loose ends um, of the show. The rest of the Flag Smashers have been rounded up and are being taken to the raft. I don't know why they keep taking people to the raft. It's just easy to break out of. (laughs) I guess that's the only fancy prison that they have. They're like, just throw them all in the raft. (laughs) (laughs) Then the van blows up, killing all of them. We also see that it is none other than Oznik. Zemo's butler. It's your boy. (laughs) Oh, Nick. He's still 
doing those badass Alfred Butler things while Zemo is locked up. I like to think he was sitting in the car that Zemo found the purple hood in. Oh. And then he said, this is for you, ZB. Butcha pow. And then done. Is that what he calls him? ZB? ZB. Mm. Like lovingly. No. <laughs> Master ZB. Master ZB. <laughs> we do get a shot of Zemo smiling happily in his cell that now all the super soldiers and the serum, it's all gone. So he finished his mission. Mm -hmm. His notebook is fully crossed off every checklist. Great. They gave him a radio. I mean, it gets the raft. It's super nice. <laughs> you get bucks, you get radios. The sound of the ocean is always there. I mean, it's you're kind lovely. of like underwater, so it's like hard to not get that. Yeah. No. <laughs> they, they sell it as a feature, but it's something that is going to happen no matter what. The pressure, your ears hurt. Oh, ouch. <laughs> so next thing we get, we meet up with Contessa Val. I, I, I'm not going to say her whole name every single time. Fair. <laughs> Walker's wife and U.S. agent. So we aren't done with Walker just yet. Gotta say, I do love the suit. I think it's super cool. It matches perfectly with the comic and what I was hoping. Yeah, but like total nerd alert, Walker, he comes out and he's like, it's the same. Yeah, I mean. black. Yeah, I mean, it is literally the same suit, just different color. Yeah, and then at the end, he's like, I'm back. I'm back. Yeah. I'm back. Val does end up telling Walker that things are about to get weird. Mm. I don't know what that is would even remotely mean but it seems like this contessa definitely has some plans or knows something that's going to be happening mm -hmm. i'm curious to see where walker comes and where his character goes yeah i think it's interesting i i mean is he just going to be a pawn in whatever grand plan she has and he thinks that oh i'm doing good for the world but she's like really pulling the strings i mean i think it's gonna i don't know i mean maybe I, I could see her manipulating him in that way. She's not dumb. No. I mean, she also knew where to find him and also knew how to manipulate him or get him on her side. So I could definitely see her being like, no, this is good. This is saving people. Mm -hmm. But it's really not saving anybody. Yeah. So we'll see. I don't mm -hmm. know. So that's a wrap on Mr. Walker for now. We then get one of the... We then get one of the scenes I was dreading for most of the series because we knew it was going to happen. And especially after the last episode when Sam told Bucky, you're avenging, not amending. Mm -hmm. We knew that he would have to go and cross off that final name on his list with great old man Yori. Mm -hmm. And he goes to his apartment and tells him. He lays it all out there. He tells him he got murdered by the Winter Soldier. I'm the Winter Soldier. I didn't have a choice. I, I do wish they would have sat with it a little more. It was upsetting to see. It was, you know, it was supposed to make you feel, or it was supposed to make you feel sad, but also glad for Bucky that he's doing that still. But I felt like it was just really quick. Yeah. And we didn't actually get to see Yuri reaction react to that news. Yeah. He kind of just put his head down and then Bucky was walking out of the apartment. It was like, no, that needs some counseling and some time. Maybe and that was it. He was just like, he got murdered by the Winter Soldier. I'm the Winter Soldier. Didn't have a choice. Okay, bye. And he ran out of the building. <laughs> He's like, I told him, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I did it. Done. I'm crossing it off my list. Done, done, done. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I hope that, you know, Yuri can finally grieve properly and move on and deal with it because like we heard from his date in the like first episode, like he can't, he doesn't know how to grieve. He doesn't know what to do. He doesn't yeah. know if his son is dead or alive. You know, it makes sense, but mm -hmm. hopefully Mr. Old Man Yuri is doing well now, you know? <laughs> yeah, we do see him sipping some something, maybe sake at the restaurant again. I thought we were maybe going to get a little nod or date number two uh, with the woman at the restaurant, but... Well, she didn't flip luck. him off, so no. maybe there's still hope. Hopefully. I liked her. <laughs> Battleship and beers. What a good time. <laughs> so Bucky then ends up delivering his finished notebook to Dr. Rayner. I love this little touch in here. He pretty much let her know that I was done with what you assigned me to do. I have made amends yep. to everybody I needed to do. That was good. I, I like that they showed that little thing. They wrapped that up in a nice little tiny bow. Yeah. And then we get the symbolic scene or the symbolic view of that wall of the woods and he's no longer in them. He's out of the woods. He's out of the woods. Oh, Good job, Bucky. Wow. I just realized that again for the second time, even though you mentioned that in the first episode. <laughs> Came full circle. <laughs> so then Sam heads to Isaiah Bradley's house. 
We find out that the GRC isn't going through with the Patch Act, and Isaiah tells Sam that he's special. Mm-hmm. So that was it was nice to see. I think that having somebody from a generation prior to you or somebody that fought for you to be where you are today to have some respect for you and be like, okay, I may have been wrong, but I get what you're doing mm-hmm. at this point. Um, I think it's clear that Isaiah is proud of him and he's proud of what Sam could possibly do for what that means of a black man being Captain America. I'm super interested to see how that goes going forward and more themes or more, you know, what they're going to do with that. Sam ends up taking Eli and Isaiah to the Captain America exhibit. Isaiah is now added into the Captain America legacy, complete with a gold statue. Mm -hmm. Super sweet. I, I think this was something that if they didn't do it, it would be really weird. And it'd be out of Sam's character Mm -hmm. because the whole time Sam was like, no, people need to know times have changed. Like we need, you're part of this whole thing. Like I can't be Captain America if you can't be part of it. (laughs) I liked in this final scene with Isaiah, you know, the one time we saw him have super soldier strength was when he threw, I think it was like a tin box or something at Sam and it went through the wall. And then this like last scene with him He's in his garden Mm -hmm. and we see him pick up what has to be a hundred pound potted tree. Oh, yeah. But like he's lifting a dandelion. Yeah. (laughs) You know, it was kind of cool to see like we've only seen these two moments of him having super strength. And one, he was, you know, mad that Sam was there. And this other time he's welcoming him there Mm -hmm. and and gardening. And and so I like that sort of book end of this character to see him maybe coming to some sort of peace mm. or having a little tiny bit of closure. I feel like the Bradleys aren't done as far as in the MCU, um, especially with Eli, because mm. I mean, in this moment, Eli's there with him, which I don't think that that wasn't intentional. Absolutely. Because this character, he is a character in the comics and mm-hmm. he does end up being some sort of pseudo, like, I, I want to say like not sidekick, but a legacy character to Captain America and Falcon and all of that. So I think it wasn't unintentional for him to be there. He, him seeing Isaiah being recognized and finally like, oh, I can breathe. Like Isaiah can breathe now. Mm-hmm. He's like, okay, I'm not going to be forgotten. And I think that this is like maybe the gears are turning in Eli's head at this point. Yeah. Well, I do like that one line that he has before they get to the Smithsonian. He says, where are we going? Yeah. You know, and so it's not just like, where are we physically going? But it's almost like Eli saying to Sam, where are we going? Right, yeah. You know, in our pursuit of being who we are Mm -hmm. in being part of the Avengers or whatever it is. Yeah, I'm I'm excited to see where this character goes. I don't think, they're introducing so many characters for like young Avengers that if they don't end up making young Avengers, it's going to be really weird. (laughs) Because there's just so many. Why are you doing this? Yeah. There's so many of them in there. All right, and now on to the final scene of the series. So we make our way to Louisiana where Bucky has found a family and Sam and Sarah and her boys love seeing that. I love seeing him play with the boys and him just being a person again. And we got a little glimpse of that in the past episode. And this one, it just seems like he's always invited down to the, the, the Wilson family. It's great. He's always welcome. And we even see in the background, there's a sign there that says Wilson Family Seafood. Yay. So that initial thing that they were trying to get the loan for to create more of a business for the family, they, they've they done it. Mm-hmm. They've created that. It also helps drive in traffic when you have Captain America there because people want those pictures Heck, and people want to meet yeah. him. <laughs> Got to get that meet and greet. <laughs> and the series ends with Bucky and Sam walking away and a new title card that reads Captain America and the Winter Soldier. So bye-bye, Falcon. Hello, Captain America. <laughs> that was fire. It was great. I When I first saw that, I was like, oh, yay. It's official. Oh, my gosh, so <laughs> cool. Yeah. And to add to that, the day that the last episode premiered, news broke that Captain America 4 is in development. Oh. So Sam Wilson as Captain America is coming back. I can't so wait. So excited. I hope, I hope, I hope. Bucky's going to be in it. <laughs> It'd be weird he if he has wasn't. To yeah. be. <laughs> I feel like in any of like the sort of solo title movies, one or two of the others are That's always true. in it. So you know Bucky's got to come back. Maybe they'll have the new Falcon in it. That would be cool. Mm, that could be a good point, story point to that. Mm-hmm. I, I'm interested to see if Bucky's going to keep the Falcon, or, uh, if Bucky's going to keep the Winter Soldier thing. Because I, I mean, it's not like a great title to have, and people know about the Winter Soldier. So. 
I wonder if there's still more to him. Like, it's not going to be over with him going to where he needs to go. Yeah, well, even when he was talking to Yuri, though, he says, he said, like, he was killed. Your son was killed by the Winter Soldier. That was me. So he 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 is the Winter Soldier. What that means, I don't know. Do you give that up or do you... Um, own it and change it. Own it, it right. right? Do you come to terms with who you once were and keep moving forward? Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe. So, brings us to the mid credit scene. Oh, y'all thought it was over. <laughs> so Sharon is now fully pardoned as she walks out of the building with a sneaky little smirk on her face. She talks to someone on the phone about having full access to prototype weapons and secrets and all of the stuff. Uh oh. So Sharon Carter slash Power Broker is obviously not done. And I think it's super interesting with the series. I don't know where it's leading. Obviously, Captain America 4. But with these other characters, you know what I mean? Like, is it going mm. to be leading into secret invasion? Is it going to be leading into Iron Wars? Because those are both shows that are coming out. And if she's going to have access to all this stuff, what does it mean? They're going to make another... Agent Carter series, but it's oh. evil Agent Carter. Mm -hmm. Also, here's a thought. No. Here's a thought. What if... I'm trying to think. Did Sharon <laughs> ever say, Haha, yes, it is I, the power broker? Yeah. I mean, Carly flat out was talking to her as the power broker. But maybe she's not. I think she is. Who is she on the phone with? The real power broker. Mm, I don't know. Senior. I don't know. Papa Power Broker. No. Mama Power Broker? Maybe it was a scroll. I mean, who knows? Oh, my God. To space? <laughs> Sharon in space? Oh, no. <laughs> space espionage? I can't. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, what is he? What? Maybe Sharon is a scroll. Mm, maybe. I think they would have showed us something, though. I don't know. She got shot. Do scrolls get shot and not die? Well, they heal. Well, there you go. <laughs> we also don't know how far from that it was. <laughs> Gosh. All right. We are going to be having a wrap-up episode of the whole series, our final thoughts, some neat things that we found out afterwards, and also answering your questions. So be sure to send those in, preferably at the beginning of the week. That way, if you want to be featured, we can feature you. We want to hear from you. <laughs> but no... A bite of would be complete without a special Derek segment. It's the final edition of <laughs> Bird Facts. Oh, great. I feel like it would be a missed opportunity and truly unjust if I didn't talk about this bird in a podcast discussing the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Is it a Falcon? Perhaps. <laughs> Wait and see. About two more sentences. <laughs> <laughs> Found on six out of seven continents, sorry, Antarctica, where it hunts other birds, sorry, pigeons and ducks, the <laughs> oh. peregrine falcon Ooh. is not only the fastest bird, but actually the fastest animal on the planet. Mm. How about it? The peregrine falcon stands anywhere from 14 to 20 inches tall with a wingspan of over three feet wide. Its coloring gives me a mullet feel. Gray, black, blue business on the top, tan, white with dark speckled party on the bottom. Whoa. What makes the peregrine falcon the fastest on the planet is its diving speed. When they spot prey, they tuck in their legs and wings and become the shape of a bullet. Uh, uh, Quite uh, uh, aerodynamic. Or like a shield. Uh, oh, interesting. <laughs> Actually, you actually see Sam take this form quite often whenever he's diving. In, I mean, I'm sure they researched it. Like, how do birds fly in the air? Mm -hmm. Especially <laughs> tuck all that stuff in. <laughs> so as the peregrine falcon dives, they can reach speeds up to 200 miles per hour. That's absolutely insane. Isn't that wild? No, thank you. They are able to reach this MPH due to their wing shape and the formation of their breastbone. So we honor our friend Sam Wilson by sharing the spectacular nature of his <laughs> former namesake, the Peregrine Falcon. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> That's not the noise. It is. It's not. I mean, I can't make my mouth sound like whatever <laughs> horns those are, but that is the cadence of it. I don't know. I'm going to check. You better give it a listen. I'm going to. Mm -hmm. All right. Well... <laughs> Stay tuned for our wrap up, and then next week we will be taking a bite of our new property. So, Holy smokes! Yeah, I mean, journey into the fold with us. 
next week. Ooh. Bye. Thanks for listening to A Bite Of, artwork and editing by our own Noah. Be sure to subscribe and follow us on Instagram at A Bite Of Pod and on Facebook at A Bite Of. If you have questions, recommendations, or just want to say hi, you can email us at abiteofpod at gmail.com. You can find us on all podcast platforms. Please be sure to rate and review to spread the word. Hope you join us next time on A Bite Of. Bye.